These three things you need to know about the Porsche box to market in 2023. Prices are still falling since the market top of last summer, but they are falling at a stable pace. 4 liter GTSs and also spiders are falling rapidly and supply is plummeting. So don't wait too long if you want to have plenty of choice. Welcome to a new market update for the Porsche Boxster. It has been 6 months since we last time had a look at the market and that means that a new market update is long overdue. 6 months ago, we saw that prices in the latest generation topped and were on their way down, while prices for the oldest generations were relatively stable. This picture still holds, but there are also some changes that are important to take into account if you are buying or selling, especially when it comes to the 981 and 718. In this video we will then also mainly focus on those generations, but let's first have a look at the market before investigating the latest developments in the price trends. Over here we have the US market of February. In total there were 571 clean titles for sale and as I already pointed out this is way less than 6 months ago. The prices over here are also significantly lower than 6 months ago. The smallest change occurred in the 986 market. You can already get a Boxster at approximately $10,000. Now what's interesting in this market is that the model year is of relatively little importance for the price. That's not surprising for a car that's 26 years old. The freshest examples are slightly more expensive, but jump by quite a bit when we move to the 987 generation. Within this generation, it are of course the 987.2s that demand a significant premium. The prices are in line with the 981 generation. This generation, in turn, has a significant overlap with the 718. For $55 to $60,000, you can choose between a 981S and a 718S. The 718 of course will have a lower mileage, but still, you have the choice. What's also fascinating is the price level of the 981 Spider. You need to bring almost $100,000 for one and this means that prices are on par with the 4 liter GTS. Which one would you have? Let me know your choice down below in the comment section. It's a question that I ask myself quite often. But now then, let's have a look at the latest development in the prices. As I mentioned in the beginning, prices are still falling but they're falling at a stable rate. Decrease rates for the oldest generation though are still relatively small. We will quickly have a look at the 986 and 987 market and then focus on the two latest generations. Over here we have the price trends for the 986s, but you can see that this looks like a big mess. Supply for the base 986.2s is extremely low, causing very large confidence intervals and unreliable price trends. So let's look at the 986.1. The correlation between the two is anyway very high. These are the price trends for the base and the S models between July 2021 and February 2023. During the last 3 months, prices dropped quite severe by 4.7% in the S market and by 7.8% in the base market. However, both of these numbers are overestimations, especially the latter one. This results from a change in market composition. The median mileage increased significantly during the last 3 months. I therefore also looked at these trends per mileage category and that revealed that prices decreased only marginally. Since July 21, we observed that the quality of the cars for sale increased. That is, the cars that were put up for sale had lower and lower miles. The median mileages are comparable to those in July 21 and so are the prices for the base model. They are up by 2.1%. S prices are down by 9%, but supply is a lot lower in this market. Overall though, 986s have been fairly stable. And the same applies to the 987s. But again, just as in the 986 market, supply for the dot .2s is very low. So please interpret these trends with some care. Focusing on the dot .1s, we can see that prices decreased by approximately 4% or $1000. Compared to last year, prices are down by 6% in the base market and by 2% in the S market. Both numbers are quite decent when you compare it to other cars. There's then also no reason to panic. Prices are still up by 20% compared to November 2020. Most of this increase occurred in the first half of 21. After that, prices were fairly stable. Now in the 981 and 718 market, it are not the prices that have been stable, but the decrease rates. Have a look at the following graph. Over here we have the price development for the base and S models between October 2020 and February 2023. Especially the price trend of the S market deserves our attention. 
prices stopped at the end of 2021. And this is remarkable. Most car prices stopped during last summer. You can see that this is the case in the base market. The S market though has been in a free fall since November 21. Prices are down by 17% or $10,000. Admittingly, free fall is a bit of an exaggeration as there are cars that lost far more since their market top. However, the consistency in the downward trend is quite shocking. Prices have been decreasing consistently by approximately 3 to 4% per 3 months and there is no sign that this will end anytime soon. Prices are still up by 12% or $5,000 compared to the end of 2020, but not for much longer if this continues. And the same applies to the base market. Prices are up by 4% compared to the end of 2020, but as you can see, it's likely that prices float lower in the upcoming months. They have been decreasing by 8.5 and 6% per 3 months during the most recent period. On a like for like basis though, so comparing cars with the same miles, prices are of course still higher. Now all of this may seem a bit crude. After all, almost every petrol head did own or wants to own a 981 Cayman. After the introduction of the 718, the 981 was even the car to have. Some of that magic remained in the market. Over here we have the price trend for the S broken down by the mileages. And this reveals that the cars with the lowest mileage, so between 0 and roughly 18,000 miles, hardly decreased in price. They only came down by 6% and this is significantly less than the market average. These type of trends you typically see for cars that could become collector's items. So what about the GTSs and the Spiders? Surely price trends are strong over there, right? They are the creme de la creme of the 981 generation. Well, not necessarily. The price trend for the GTS shows a lot of similarities with the S. Prices topped already at the end of 2020 and have been trending down ever since. Prices are even at the same level as in October 2020. The Spider is of course a special car and the price trend is then also slightly stronger. Prices have been coming down but they are still up compared to the end of 2020. However, for both of these price trends goes that we need to be careful with drawing conclusions. There are currently only 8 GTSs for sale and 13 spiders. So let's move on to the 718 market. The story though is very similar over there. Prices are coming down. Over here we can see that compared to November 21, prices decreased by 8% in the base, by 12% in the S, and by 14% in the GTS market. These numbers are not shockingly high and prices are also up by 14 and 9% in the base and S market. However, the GTS market is at the same level as at the end of 2020. The increase rate was lower and the decrease rate higher. Looking at the short term trends, we can see that the direction is still down. Now what's interesting over here is that the total change over the complete period is slightly larger than in the 981 market. If I add the base and the S model together, you can see that, obviously, they are highly correlated. However, in the grand scheme of things, the 718 is doing very well, especially if you compare it to the German market for example. Many people expected 718 prices to plummet, as it has a 4 cylinder engine, but as you can see, it certainly isn't performing worse than the 981. Prices are up by 14 and 9% versus 4 and 12% in the 981 market. So what does this mean for the 718s with the 6 cylinders, so the 4 liter GTSs and the Spiders, cars that are very high on the list of many petrol heads. Surprisingly, things are worse. Compared to the end of 2021, prices are down by 15% or $19,000 in the 4 liter GTS market and by 13% in the Spider market. Clearly both price trends are pointing down. These decrease rates are, however, a bit of an underestimation due to the inflow of relatively young cars. They keep the median prices high. If we look for example at the model year split for the Spiders, we can see that the drops are quite steep. Cars from model year 2020 and 2021 are down by roughly 17%, more than the median drop. The same goes for the 4 liter GTS market. Over here we can see that prices for model year 2021 cars are down by 20% or $26,000. I think that these numbers are a bit higher than what generally speaking was expected, and certainly higher than for the normal models. 
So we spent now quite some time with the price trends and we saw that they are clearly pointing down for the 718 and the 981s. It's however not the only thing that's trending down. Supply is plummeting. And this might be key for the future price development as it is an important input to the scarcity level. Have a look at this. We can see that supply increased when prices surged, but fell when prices started to decrease. Supply is down by 50% and is approximately at the same level as at the end of 2020. So we're really talking about a significant decrease. Now all else equal, this means that there's a good chance that prices will stabilize or even increase. But of course, things are not this simple and we cannot look at merely supply. Prices for example increased in line with supply during this period. So to get a complete picture of the scarcity level, we also need to consider demand. Unfortunately though, we cannot measure this directly. What we can do is look at a proxy for the scarcity level, the time that cars are advertised for sale. And data for this analysis is very kindly provided by Autotempest. Autotempest conveniently pulls listings from a bunch of different websites into one place, so that you can browse through all of them. Check out the links in the description to find the boxers for sale right now. Let's have a look at the numbers. We can see that there were large but expected fluctuations in the time that it took to sell a 718 Boxster S. We can see that they were selling like hotcakes during 2020. It's no surprise that prices surged in this period. But things changed halfway through 2021. The cars were advertised longer and longer and quite quickly it became apparent that the hype was over. The advertised time rose to 60 days. So of course prices decreased significantly during last year. More recently though, we can see that the balance returned. The advertised time stabilized at approximately 55 days. So based on this chart, I think it's unlikely that we'll see an acceleration in the price decrease, especially since spring is around the corner. Prices, of course, are still likely to come down. A car is a depreciating asset after all. And with that, it's time to wrap up and conclude. We saw that prices are still falling consistently in the 981 and 718 Boxster market. The price trends themselves don't contain any bottoming indicators. Prices also came down in the 986 and 987 market, but the magnitudes are relatively small. The cars are also much older. Now what's quite surprising, at least I think so, is that the depreciation rates in the 4 liter GTS and Spider market are relatively high. These cars are often thought to have stable prices, but we saw that this is not the case, at least not since their market top. Contrasting to these falling prices, we also saw that supply levels dropped by roughly 50%. And this is reflected in the advertised times. These are way up compared to the price frenzy. During the end of 2022 though, we saw that they stabilized. And this is an indication that the price decrease won't accelerate any further. Not unimportant if you're in the market for a Boxster and care about values. Now if you're wondering why some other models like the 25 years edition or the Boxster T aren't featured in the video, this is because the markets are relatively small and the price trends show a high volatility. In general though, they have a high correlation to the rest of the market. And with that we arrived at the end of this video. Now if you enjoy this data driven way of analyzing car markets, but would have liked to see the analysis for a different car, head over to my channel. Over there you will find detailed market analysis for a large variety of cars. Can't find the car you're looking for? Comment down below with the name of the car and once there are enough requests for a certain car, I'll make a video about it. As always, thank you for watching and I hope to see you next week for a new market update.